Welcome to Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn, Before You Buy. MMOs are huge games with huge commitments involved, and you may need more info on if the game is for you or something you are truly interested in before you start paying for it. This is a game that's always changing and always updating what info is true or not. For that reason, I recommend also making sure to check the description for any updates, changes, and more. I also recommend that, whether you are convinced to buy the game or convinced to pass mid-video, you stick around until the end of the video, or at least skip to the end for the most important info in the section called Final Notes. I will be going over the final overview to sum up the most important bits, but for now, let's get started at the beginning. What makes Final Fantasy XIV Final Fantasy XIV? To start, the game is immensely story focused, to the point that a majority of the game is somehow locked behind the main story quests. But it's not just some throwaway story. Over the last seven years, they've built expected. up a real world with an engaging story, lovable characters, and villains you love to hate. You seem puzzled. Or maybe love to love. Oh, I, I won't judge. Many this. players, myself included, call the Shadowbringers expansion the best Final Fantasy story in years, if not the single best Final Fantasy story of all time. It's also okay to get distracted and do stuff that isn't the story too. There's a ton of side content to do that's battle, crafting, or gathering focused. And as I said, this has all been built up over seven years, which means there's also seven years of content to do from dungeons, the story, the different levels of raiding, gathering, or even crafting, which is its entirely own complex system and minigame to learn. To top it all off, new content arrives around every three and a half months. The game is constantly being updated with new story, new quests, and so much more. There's a lot of content but you don't have to do it all at once. You can take your time with it. Most of the game's content remains playable thanks to the level sync and roulette system, which generally does a good job at making sure everyone gets their cues filled. Just be warned that the game does start out a bit slow, especially because they've had to rebalance jobs continuously for every new expansion, and skills have been spread over 80 levels where to start, they only had to fit in 50 levels. Things will get very busy by level 80, but the journey up to that point can be very slow depending on which job you choose. But all the balancing that caused this does shine through in PvE. While other MMOs follow a meta typically with large differences between job performance, the more important side of meta in this game is personal skill. You can pick a job you like and perform better than some random person who only picked a job due to meta. The game truly is that balanced that you are allowed to play what you like and not what the game is forcing on you. But I'm not quite sure how much this applies to the PvP side of things. While the PvE content is very much alive, filled with people and loved, there's the PvP side of the game that's generally ignored. There are plenty of people who do love the PvP, but they're few and far between. The game does even have ranking seasons for those who want to go hardcore in the PvP system, but don't expect all that too much from it. Give it a shot though, as there are many different modes to try, from 4v4 all the way up to massive, 72 person war zones. But that's not all. You can do almost everything in the game with just one character. Every piece of content, all 17 jobs, the limited job, all 8 crafters, 
and the three gatherers that are available as of Shadowbringers. And there is just so much more to do. Alts are not at all needed. There's even a New Game Plus feature that exists just to allow you to replay the main story. You don't even need a second character to do the main story again. You may not even need a second character to play with friends. There's a ton of different servers in the game, but are grouped together from 6 to 11 servers within a data center, to which every server in a data center is connected and plays together. You can visit other servers anytime you want, and random queues will fill you with players across all the servers in your data center. This gives you a wide array of people to meet and interact with. Which, there are also plenty of social structures to make sure you're not alone on your journey. There's no global chat channel, but there's guilds here in Final Fantasy XIV called Free Companies, chat groups you can join and have up to eight of called Link Shells, and a further eight link shells that can have people across all of the worlds of your data center. So not only do you have a guild, which can be casual gatherers, hardcore raiders, or anything in between, you can have 16 link shells for whatever you may want to use them for. Raiding, socializing, other game content, anything you might be able to think of that you want to make a chat channel based on, you can make it. But you don't have to interact with most of these features, but you won't be able to play entirely solo. Even the main story will have you constantly doing dungeons and boss fights, which will need you to have a party. The in-game systems ensure you will get a random party of people to suit your needs, but if you are hoping to play entirely solo from level 1 to level cap, that's not a possibility. Well, aside from the overworld content, that is. But if you want to progress the story, you have to do dungeons and other party content. Which, that in itself may actually make you want to play this game in that you're forced to do party content at some points. Oh, and the UI customization is just about endless. And these are just a few reasons to want to play Final Fantasy XIV. But the next question comes to... What do you play it on? Final Fantasy XIV is on a couple different platforms, but no matter what platform you play on, you're playing with everyone else. Everyone connects to the same set of servers. Well, except for the Chinese players who have their own separate FF14, but you could technically go play with Japanese players on the Japanese data center though likely not recommended without some kind of grasp on the language. That aside though, you will be playing with players across all of the different platforms. Said platforms are as follows. Windows, PS4 with an eventual PS5 port, Mac, and Steam. That sounds weird, right? Steam is its own platform. You cannot have a Windows and Steam account at the same time. They're one in the same as far as a subscription goes. So if you buy the base game on Steam, you have to buy all of the expansions from Steam. If you bought the client version of A Realm Born, you are stuck buying from Square directly or third-party sellers for expansions. Which, if you didn't catch that, you can play on multiple systems with one account. There are a large number of people who play back and forth between PC and PS4, just not client and Steam at the same time. There are even systems in place to make sure that saving game settings is easily transferred between platforms, or even from PC to PC due to some kind of failure or upgrading. I'll also warn you that Mac used to be on a very, very bad client. But with the release of Shadowbringers, almost all problems seem to have been ironed out. So if you do research besides this video and find out that the Mac version is really lacking, double check if that info is from before August 2019. August 2019 is when Shadowbringers released, 
And that's around when the Mac client got improved. Finally, on the opposite end of the spectrum is a possible Xbox version. Phil Spencer has said he is seeking to get Final Fantasy XIV onto Xbox as recently as Winter 2019, and with the next generation of systems on the way, the new Xbox slated for Holiday 2020, pending any delays, this could be the generation that 14 makes its way onto the Microsoft family of consoles. But keep in mind, there is no official release on the way yet. But keep an eye out, and you may be in for a surprise. This is mostly just speculation at this point, but you never know. Choose the platform you like, as all of them have their own advantages and disadvantages. And there's plenty of high-level players who play only on controller. Just be ready to buy a cheap USB keyboard to use for chatting if you play on console. But that's not the only expense to play Final Fantasy XIV. Final Fantasy XIV is both a game you have to buy and has a subscription model. I'll be listing all the prices in American dollars, so be ready for slight variance in pricing depending on your region. The $20 purchase of A Realm Reborn comes with 30 days of playtime for free, but after those days run out, you need to start paying for a subscription. It also comes with the first expansion. Additionally, you must also purchase expansions for $40 to go beyond level cap, but only one expansion. On all official vendors, it becomes impossible to buy old expansions. The purchase of the newest expansion entitles you to all previous expansions. So as a new player, you only need to buy the base game and the most recent expansion when you are ready to go into expansion content. Which, as of Shadowbringers, that's two expansions for the price of one, and they go on sale quite a lot. But let's get onto the subscription prices. There's a cheaper entry-level subscription that locks you to one character per server and a total of eight characters. But as we discussed, you only ever need one character to be able to do anything. It's $12.99 for 30 days, but if you need the higher tier of subscription, it's not that much more expensive. The monthly sub for a standard account is priced at $14.99, only $2 more. But you can also buy a 90-day or 180-day bulk price. 90 days is only $13.99 per month, and 180 days is the same price at entry, at only $12.99 per month. Just be ready to commit to the full price, since that's the per month price, but you are buying in bulk and paying for the full duration up front. All other purchases beyond this point are optional. There's a further pair of subscriptions too. The first is Retainers, which are an additional two American dollars per month. Retainers are basically your banking system. The game gives you two for free, which is plenty enough if you're not a hoarder. You might need to pick and choose some of what you keep, but I only personally pay for one more, and I'm very inefficient and hoard a couple of things. If I condensed, I could easily deal with just two retainers. More retainers does offer other small minor advantages, but I'm not going to get too deep into those, as they're not overall going to affect your gameplay. The other subscription you could buy is a mobile app. It has its own further freemium business model that allows you to do some minor in-game stuff like retainer management, a free teleport location, but most importantly, more storage. You have a special inventory called the Saddlebag that is increased with the app, and you are also given an entire retainer. This subscription costs $5 a month, but the app itself is free, and some of the features you can use for free for very little effort. 
Even if you never pay for the subscription, you may still want to look into the app if you play the game. But on top of all of this, there is also a cash shop. You never have to touch it at all for any reason, but there is admittedly a lot on it. Mounts, little cute minions, outfits to make your character look nicer, emotes, and most importantly, Fantasia. The game does give you a free Fantasia after a point, but that's it, just one. What a Fantasia is, is a character creator update. When you start the game, you create your custom character, pick a race, give them their looks, and can only do minor updates like hair without a Fantasia. But a Fantasia lets you do everything. You can go from a male human to a female dragon. I'm willing to bet this is the most purchased item on the online store, as I know quite a few Fantasia addicts who will change race every other week or maybe even monthly, or maybe even several times a week. Some people get really crazy with it, but race serves no gameplay advantage. It's all cosmetic. That is to say, the entire cash shop is cosmetic. While the idea in itself may bother you, you can at least rest easy in that there has at no point been any gameplay advantages. The most gameplay advantage you may get out of this is buying a level boost or a story skip, which that's just paying to not play the game, and unless you're doing an alt, I never recommend these. They're very expensive, and really not at all worth it for the type of game this is. Grinding isn't all that hard, and like I said, unless you're not interested in the story at all, the story is really good. But finally, you also have to pay for name changes, which cost 10 bucks each change. Make sure to pick a character name you do like before you start playing, and invest a lot of time in a character, only to have to change their name later because you don't like the name at all. And if you really need to, you can transfer characters across worlds, and each of those will cost you $18. Unless you're changing data centers, it's really not worth it. But at least there's a refer a friend system? It's something at least. But while there is admittedly a lot of stuff covered in this section, I've basically not touched any of it in my five years or more of playing this game. One extra retainer because I don't want to be inventory conscious, and some swapping back and forth between entry and standard subscription prices. I don't interact at all with the cash shop. But like I said, I don't blame you if the fact that it exists is enough to bother you and turn you off the game. Maybe you're the type to be tempted by shiny stuff like is on the shop. But if you're not that kind of person, you can very easily ignore everything beyond the game and expansion purchases and main subscription model. To sum everything up, Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn is a huge game with seven years of content you can take your time to do. There's no rush. It also gets constant updates so there's always something new right around the corner. It costs $20 for the base game and you can play on PlayStation or on PC with a chance of an Xbox version down the line. You only ever need one character if you want, but that one character can do so many things you'll nearly never run out of stuff to do. But most importantly, to start playing, you don't need to pay for anything beyond your system and internet connection. Let's go on to the free trial. The trial has changed many times over the years, but as of Shadowbringers, the free trial is as follows. Unlimited gameplay time. One hour, ten hours, a thousand hours. You can play until you are satisfied with it. You do have a level cap of 60, which covers the entirety of the base game 
and the first expansion. Out of all 17 battle jobs as of Shadowbringers, 13 of them are accessible, as well as all crafting and gathering classes. But you can basically do everything up to level 60. This also means you can use the Heavensward exclusive jobs and the exclusive race, the Aura. The full first four years of content of the game are all available to you. There are, however, a lot of restrictions to reduce botting and such. Basically, all social features are off limits. Free companies, creating link shells, whispering, the market board, and even creating parties are not things you can do. But people can whisper you, invite you to link shells, and people can add you to parties and even make you the leader after the fact, which means you're still able to do party content no problem. Additionally, you cannot use retainers at all, so no bank space outside of what you are carrying on you at all times. But you do have a fairly large inventory. This is limited because that is also how you connect to the market to sell stuff. Not that you'd really want to win the free trial, as you also have a 300,000 gill cap, which that's plenty of money to have for what you can do. It's not overall that much, but it's plenty for what you need to do. There's a few other smaller restrictions too, but these are the main ones. But as far as completely free trial is concerned, there is so much you can do. Some players go as far as to level cap everything before going to buy the base game. So before you make any final decisions on if you truly do or do not want to give Final Fantasy XIV a try, go and make an account and play the trial. Experience what all of us have for the last bunch of years. Just be ready to lose yourself and a lot of your time if you do take the plunge. And again, take your time. This game is a marathon, not a sprint. There's so much to do and so much to enjoy. Thanks for watching Final Fantasy XIV before you buy. Even beyond this video, I encourage you to weigh all of your options before finally making a decision on a purchase. Between Collective's Editions and the platform of choice. There's plenty I even left out that I felt was unimportant generally, but might specifically be important to you and your personal preferences. There's a lot to learn about this game, but I can't very well tell you about all of it, or we'll be here forever. Either way, hope to see you in Aorzea. Take care, and may the power of Anadid Hogs lay waste to your enemies.